the big question of course is is this supreme court order implementable can we have an indian election where politicians will not appeal on grounds of caste religion or language abhishek manu singhvi member of parliament national spokesperson congress dr sambit patra national spokesperson bjp prashant bhushan supreme court advocate and ts krishnamurthy former chief election commissioner with me let's get it straight first from the politicians abhishek manu singhvi can you cross your heart and tell me that the congress party has never appealed for votes on grounds of caste religion or language ever in an indian election and will they stop as a result of this order i would be hypocritical and dishonest if i was to say yes i think there is no political party here which has not done that there have been aberrations there have been mistakes but differences of degree make for differences of kind mm -hmm. certainly the degree of violations in this regard by the congress party have been far 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 lesser than a lot of other parties including the ruling party today but uh, rajdeep i don't think you could start this issue with a purely political approach mm -hmm. this is an epoch supreme court judgment and while i agree wholeheartedly with you that an epoch making supreme court milestone is going to be very very difficult in the operational reality of prep of, of of implementation i agree it is nonetheless vital for our polity to have it reiterated as to what secularism really means in action the supreme court has walked the talk the supreme court has not in, entered into sophistry i have believed that the earlier judgment of 96 has been far too making far too nuanced and fine a set of distinctions this judgment has been very unequivocal and clear mm -hmm. and one or two last points rajdeep we tend to forget that it is interpreted 123 of the act of the representation of people's act expansively it was an amendment in 3a of that act yes. which uh, made an appeal to religion a specific corrupt practice and to suggest that it should be only your religion which will be implicating you uh, is there is, is is something which i find astonishing no no what is his appeal to religious grounds whether his own or other religions should be and that expansion has been made clearly by the majority today i do agree that these are matters of principle which the supreme court decides the implementation is by bodies like the election commission the local police the local administrator and there we miserably fail i am concerned that in the near elections coming in up which has become a validation exercise for some parties there will be an indulgence in polarization but the principle has to be still repeated so the principle is all very well one small point and i'll finish sir at the end of the you know, day at the end I of the day we live in a world of practical reality i'll bring but in the, the election Court commissioner no, no, no just a minute supreme sir supreme court can't pick up the sword Ra rajdeep Next. the supreme court can't pick up a car and the sword and go into the field and say we are going to catch your neck because you are violating it that's the job under articles 141 and 142 you are obliged to implement the supreme court order i'll If come to the, the law, implementation sir in a moment sambit patra sambit patra dr singhvi dr singhvi i have other guests let listen to them dr uh, dr patra do you also concede that your party in particular when the word was used by dr singhvi in terms of degree has often misused religion in particular to appeal for votes there are caste based parties of north india there are parties accused of minority appeasement and there are parties like yours which have used jo hindu hit ki baat karega wahi desh pe raj karega you might remember your war cry of the 1990s you have used religion misused it during elections will you at least concede that on a day like today since we are drawing from the supreme court of india mm -hmm. and let me tell you i mean in fact i believe none of us on the panel today have gone through the judgment because the judgment is not out so to speak in detail would be really difficult but coming to the question that you have asked whether i should concede today absolutely no because since you are speaking about hindutva the mm -hmm. same supreme court from where from which we are drawing today on three previous occasions 1966 1976 and 1995 the last case that mr singhvi was talking about mm -hmm. has said that hindutva is a way of life and is not a religion no no let's not confuse hindutva with this judgment in the name of no 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 uh, dr patra let's not no, mislead I'm audiences not yes in the past no, no, judgment no, 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 in the past sir judgments have said hindutva is a way of life yes. but 
वेन यू से जो हिंदू हित yes. की बात करेगा वही देश पे राज करेगा और द काइंड ऑफ कॉमेंट दट साधवी निरंजन हैज मेड इन द पास then you are entering the dangerous territory See, that the supreme court today is warning you to stay away from do you at least concede that rajdeep your first question was hindu the word hindu was used by you yes. you said that jo hindu hit ki baat karega see the hindu word hinduism hindu and hindutva has been defined by three occasions by the supreme court itself that it is a way of life it no, is sir, not religion no sir they have only described so hindutva as a way of life when you say jo hindutva hindu and hinduism hindu ba baat karega it's a clear appeal on grounds of religion let's not confuse people no 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 i'm not confusing people at all because the prime case was in manohar uh, uh, joshi case this is After the whole contention wrong. that the word hindu and hindutva was used so it since it has already been Rajdeep. judged i mean the judgment is already out in that case yes. i should not be going against the supreme court why should i say what the supreme court has not said no, well no, no. yes the fabric of this country no, is secular no, no. and none of us either Rajdeep, our politi our, our party or the other political party should should in fact travel beyond so the, you uh, are saying fabric of the so sambit patra you are crossing your heart on my program and saying that in the last 60 70 years correction. bjp has no bjp mla or mp has ever appealed for votes on grounds of religion or caste am i correct you are saying you are it is wrong to say using the word that. hindutva you have used the word hindutva if quick response word, quick response from you abhishek and then let me widen hmm. it again Sambit Patra insisting Rajdeep. that the BJP has used the word Hindutva while appealing number for one, votes, not the word number Hindu. Number one, the ruling party. I think the 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 ruling party and mm. its representative is in a minority of one in this country. If mm. he thinks that they have never used it, mm. I leave the hypocrisy and the dishonesty of that statement for you to judge. Mm. Secondly, my friend forgets that this very seven judge bench was constituted. partly to reconsider the hindutva judgment of justice verma that's the whole point i was making mm -hmm. i was never satisfied with it because it had a lot of sophistry and made distinction without differences now this judgment the majority makes it clear that all that sophistry is gone when you speak i would challenge mr patra or a bjp candidate to say what you just now quoted and find under the new law whether it's an appeal to religion or not it clearly is okay that it is an appeal to religion hindu versus hindu is gone I, the clarification is the reason why this seven judge bench said but and last but not the least not last but not the, the judgment least, i want you to remind 30 seconds very important you know that beautiful phrase for the people by the people of the people somebody asked for uh, i can understand by the people and for the people but why of the people of the people is to give each person in india a sense of ownership of the country a co-owner and that is the meaning of secularism no, when no, you deny we that can, we can come to the definition corner of indian sir i i, I again come to, yes yes somebody you want to respond no no uh, dr singh we let's give the fair amount of time to dr patra dr patra quickly you know with all due respect i know mr singh we is an ardent lawyer but i am also uh, clear about the fact that neither mr singh we or a uh, anchor and uh, the anchor of the show you rajdeep have gone through the judgment since the judgment is not out why are we fighting on this no, issue no no i have the judgment if you can tell me what sir i have the, i have the basic judgment sir by 4 to 3 you have the excerpts of the judgment the judgment no, 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 makes it very clear seeking votes on grounds of religion and caste no one has the judgment no one has the judgment it are, those are only excerpts of judgment i have the excerpt there is four, uh, four is to three judgment sir exactly. the bench was constituted to reconsider hindutva that's why seven judges sat But, okay but i i need to widen this we can you please read out i need to widen this what the bench has said about hindutva sir sir i cannot get it for two two ma'am over the judgment you are right we only have excerpts i don't have the full judgment prashant bhushan senior lawyer the moment the judgment came you seem to suggest But that this was enough. a message that's to right enough. wing rebel rousers let's be clear and the images i'm showing azam khan samajwadi party has appealed for votes on grounds of minority mayawati has been accused of accuse uh, of appealing for votes on grounds of caste so have other caste based parties why are we only singling out right wing parties this is a cancer that has spread for years across our system this is vote bank politics it's caste and it's uh, religion in fact the minority judgment says that that we are living in a fools paradise in a democracy people will appeal on grounds of religion and caste
No, Rajdeep, you are right no, no, that uh, it's not just the BJP which has been appealing for votes on the ground of religion mm -hmm. uh, or caste. It's also uh, the other parties. In fact, many parties, if not most parties, have been doing that. Uh, but the, uh, it becomes a lot more dangerous when the ruling party uses the majority, the religion of the majority community as a basis of its religious appeal and divisive politics. That's the most dangerous thing for any country to have because that's the straight road to fascism or religious fascism. So therefore, that's why, that's why when I tweeted about this, I pointedly drew attention to the fact that uh, this hopefully will put an, attend, uh, put an end to this very, very dangerous kind of majoritarian uh, uh, religious appeal, which is a straight road to fascism. I'm not saying that uh, an appeal by the minority communities on the basis of their religions, etc., or by candidates appealing sir, to there minority are, there are religions parties should not Dalit be a corrupt Muslim practice. Of course, it sir, should there be. Have been parties and of which course, have said it is. Dalit Muslim hmm. bhai bhai Hindu kaum kahan se aayi. So let's be clear, sir. Parties have used the Dalit card. They have used the Muslim card. We cannot ah, say they have is, only used is, the yes, Hindu yes, card. I, I agree. Okay, you agree with that. I just want to get in T.S. Krishnamurti. Uh, of course, you know, Mr. Krishnamurti, the course, central question that I have right. asked, hmm. is this unimplementable? Can the election commission really act as a result of this judgment? We have a UP election coming out where parties will appeal in the names of co community. The Ram Mandir issue will be raked up by some. You'll have some will rake up the issue of caste identity. Can the EC really step in? Well, I would like to say that uh, it's not going to be easy to implement this decision. However, the political parties have to be much more circumspect in using religion at, as a result of this judgment. I am sure the election commission will clarify the implications of the judgment before the election so that people know what position they, are, they have to stake. And, and the, unfortunately in India, the political parties are the weakest link in our democracy. And political parties have not been regulated properly, even if they are used and let the election commission comes across such violations, what can they do? They can only file an appeal, uh, file a case in the court. Is that the end of it? No. So it is necessary for us to go far, further in this regard to ensure that. So what do you think the election commission used, can do, sir? But it is a, it acts sir, with due deterrent. regard, what do you the think the election commission, commission can do, barring sending notices? The election in the past, all you do is send notices. When is the last time, barring the case of Manohar Joshi, where you actually went ahead and disqualified someone? I. I entirely agree with you. It's not going to be easy. The election commission needs some more powers in this regard. We need power to di uh, to disqualify if a person is going to use religion as a campaigning instrument. So the the model code of conduct itself, you know, I have been pleading that it has it needs the legislative support. So election commission may clarify these uh, these um, um, uh, implementation problems, and it has to be alerted. All parties need to be alerted as to what sir, they can do and what they should not do. Perhaps the model code of conduct can be revised. They can call all the parties, discuss with them, and tell them these sir, are the you things you think our political parties care about your model? I'm but very sorry to that, sound cynical. I would say they, they don't, sir, unless, there are, unless you are able to disqualify them, they don't care about the model code of conduct. Let's be honest. That is what I have been telling. The election commission should have the power to disqualify the parties or the candidates if they have violations, both of model, conduct, model code of conduct as well as this judgment of the Supreme Court. It is necessary. This is done immediately, expeditiously before the elections. Right. I, I want to ask you, Sambit Patra, very interestingly today, the Prime Minister did not refer even once to the Ram Mandir issue in his rally in Lucknow. Are we going to see an election where no BJP candidate in Uttar Pradesh, a state where religion has polarized people in the past, will not touch upon the Ram Mandir issue, will not touch upon, or do you believe the Supreme Court is living in a fool's paradise? Do you believe the Supreme Court needs to recognize reality that the BJP as a political party has every right to rake up issues like Ram Mandir? See, as far as the Ram Mandir's mention in the BJP manifesto is concerned, mm -hmm. if you would go through the manifesto, you would realize that we have only towed the constitutional line. 
that whatever the highest court of the country decides, Bharatiya Janata Party would abide by it. Mm -hmm. It is an emotive issue of the country and we would follow the constitution of this country. So I don't think the Supreme Court would see anything wrong in this. We are only promising to abide by the constitution, the highest book of the country. But having said this, let me just answer to Mr. Prashant Bhushan, for whom I have the highest respect because he's a very eminent lawyer. He right now said that his main concern was Bharatiya Janata Party and the ruling dispensation because the majoritarian appeasement by the Bharatiya Janata Party is really dangerous and will lead to fascism in this country. To Prashant Bhushan ji, I would only say that the parties which say that Yaqub Memon was hanged only because he was a Muslim, don't you think that is more dangerous than anything else in this country? To project terrorists with the tag of religion, I believe is the worst form of fascism in this country, which eminent lawyers like you should fight against. And thirdly and very importantly for the Congress, I believe Mr. Abhishek Manu Shingui, a very tall personality in the Congress, should have at least gone through the Anthony report before commenting about other political parties. None other than your contemporary Sir, Mr. No. A.K. Anthony has submitted a report. Uh, okay. He has submitted a report to the effect as to why Congress lost an election we take because of appeasement of a section and not appealing the other section. Whether it is appealing or appeasement, the Supreme Court has sent out a more warning clearly to all of you. The time has come to draw some kind of a Lakshman Rekha. It is unacceptable to try to seek votes on grounds of religion and caste. My fear though is that nothing really will change on the ground. Maybe the Supreme Court was pushing for an ideal world. The real world is far from ideal. I appreciate your joining us and I appreciate that at least the Supreme Court has set some kind of a template for the future for our politicians. Coming up next, it's the big court day because the Supreme Court is again making the headlines. It removes Anurag Thakur as the beast. Welcome back. It's arguably the biggest judgment in Indian sports history. Today, the Supreme Court sent a clear message to the rich and powerful that no one is above the law of the land. BCCI President Anurag Thakur and Secretary Ajay Shirke have been forced out of the BCCI and a road map laid out to implement reforms promised by the Loda Committee. The big question, of course, is who will rule the BCCI now, with sources telling India today that it is possible that former India captain Saurabh Ganguly could become the new president of Indian cricket. Okay, on this big news day, let me go to one of our newsmakers tonight. Former Supreme Court Chief Justice, Justice R.M. Lodha, who's passed, uh, who's made the recommendations that have effectively led to Anurag Thakur and Ajay Shirke having to step down from the BCCI. Appreciate your joining us, sir. After BCCI's continuing defiance, the Supreme Court setting the record straight, President Anurag Thakur, Secretary Ajay Shirke being shown the door. Do you believe the BCCI could have avoided this confrontation? Yeah, surely because uh, today's order is sequitur uh, to earlier Supreme Court's order of 18 July. Had they implemented the timelines given by us uh, post 18 July order and implemented uh, the Supreme Court verdict, uh, perhaps uh, we would not have seen today's order. You know, there are those, of course, uh, who over the years have criticized the BCCI, that it's a cozy little club of a few people who know each other. Uh, many of them politicians have had a monopoly over the BCCI. Is this particular order now going to show that there is a lot of change that will take place? Can we expect a dramatic shift in the kind of people who will be part of the BCCI? Look, our report breaks the monopoly and, uh, you know, uh, the cozy club, as you are uh, terming it, because we have provided a structure uh, where uh, uh, there are strict norms of eligibility, there is cap uh, on the tenure, uh, the number of tenures. So, therefore, uh, that would not have survived long back once along, once our order was implemented uh, after the Supreme Court accepted it. So today's order actually uh, is a step in implementation of its earlier order of 18 July, uh, whereby our report of 4 January 2016 was largely accepted. 
I, I want you to just hold on for a bit, Justice Lodha. I want you to hear what Anurag Thakur, the BCCI president, said in response to this order. Listen in. I had the honor of serving Indian cricket. Over the years, Indian cricket saw its very best in terms of administration and development of the game. BCCI is the best managed sports organization in the country with defined procedures. India has the best cricket infrastructure built and maintained by the state associations with the help of BCCI. India has more quality players than anywhere in the world. For me, it was not a personal battle. It was a battle for the autonomy of the sports body. I respect Supreme Court as any citizen should. Supreme Court judges feel that BCCI could do better under retired judges. I wish them all the best. I'm sure Indian cricket will do well under their guidance. My commitment to the best of Indian cricket and autonomy of sports will always remain. Justice Lodha, you might have heard Anurag Thakur there. He's saying, and he's mentioned this a lot in the past, BCCI is one of the best-run organizations in the country. If the judges believe they can do a better job than us, then so be it. Do you believe that the BCCI will suddenly transform as a result of judges or people outside the likes of Anurag Thakur taking over the organization? No, these are, look, our reforms, once they are put in place, mm. uh, will bring, you know, best practices uh, for governance and administration of uh, any game. Uh, it will bring in transparency, it will bring in accountability, uh, it will break monopoly, it will bring good governance. And if you achieve these objectives, obviously uh, the game would be better run and that would be for the benefit of the game. You know, one final question. There's also a question mark. Anurag Thakur is a member of parliament and uh, allegedly uh, post-18 July went to the ICC, asked for a letter stating that the Lodha committee would was interfering in the governance of uh, Indian cricket. As a result, perjury charges may come against him. Do you believe that the perjury charges that may be leveled against Anurag Thakur are valid in your view? No, it has nothing to do with his being member of parliament. So far as uh, this aspect is concerned, I believe no final order has been passed by the Supreme Court. The ma matter continues to be subjudice, so uh, it is not for me to comment on that. Okay, let me leave it there. Justice Lodha, appreciate your joining us. Clearly, there's an earthquake in Indian cricket. The old order is giving way to new, and who knows, Saurav Ganguly could become the next BCCI president. Just a little bit more on the news today. Back in a moment. You are watching India Today.